Welcome to Mount Prospect Public Library's Library Life. I'm Kathy Cushing. Today we'll take a virtual journey back in time, enjoying a Parisian salon with Gertrude Stein. We'll also peer into the future, discussing the financial forecast for 2018. And we'll catch a glimpse of some of the most popular sci-fi characters to date as young patrons celebrate Star Wars Day. But first, throughout the coming year, our library will be commemorating its 75th anniversary, beginning in February with a special winter reading program. Here's what to expect when you connect with your library. 2018 marks the library's 75th anniversary, and we're kicking off our celebrations by inviting patrons to connect with your library, which is the theme of this year's winter reading program. When we connect with our library, we connect with so many different things. And that's what we're celebrating, is the opportunity to connect with books, movies, music, to really uh, celebrate enjoying everything that you love to do that the library can supply. This year's adult winter reading program encourages patrons 18 and older to pursue many of the indoor activities they love, like reading books, watching movies, and listening to music. All we're asking patrons to do is to enjoy the books, movies, or the music CDs that the library has. Um, they check those materials out, enjoy them at home. When they bring them back, come to our desk. We're going to give you a piece of chocolate just for participating. And um, you're going to get an entry slip for each book, each movie, or each music CD that you enjoy. Patrons earn a chance to win cool prizes with every entry slip they complete. We have five prizes this year. We have two reading book prizes, and that's going to be a $75 gift card to Target, along as with some books and some snacks. We have two movie prizes with a $40 gift card to Target and some popcorn and movie box candy. And then for our listening to CD prize, we're having uh, them win a set of wireless Bluetooth headphones and some snacks to go with it. We love to talk to people about what they're reading and watching and listening to, and we find our patrons enjoy that too. Young adults are also encouraged to shake off those winter blues by checking in at the Fiction AV Teen Desk in order to connect with your library during the month of February. All you have to do is read a book, listen to a CD, or watch a movie, anything that you can get here at the library. You can stop by the Fiction AV Teen Desk and fill out a raffle ticket um, as an entry to win one of our awesome prizes. Prizes here reflect teen interests and passions. At the end of the month, we are going to pull three different names out of all of the drawings. Um, so the more you do, the better chance you have to win. The three prizes we have um, are a ukulele, a pair of skull candy headphones, and a giant stack of signed YA books uh, signed by the authors. It's a great way to sort of shake away those winter blues. It, it can get really dreary out there, especially in February. Down in the Youth Services Department, children ages 11 and younger will be experiencing a winter reading program that encompasses a number of fun-filled undertakings. We're inviting kids to connect with us by coming in and um, doing activities. We always have Discovery Zone trivia for the older kids. We'll have a scavenger hunt for younger kids. You can decorate a picture and we'll hang it on the board. One of the activities on the card is to recommend a book for our display, so if you put your name and your favorite book on a card, we'll put that book on display for other kids to check out. Every child earns small incentive prizes throughout their winter reading journey, while building chances to win a book, gift card, or grand prize package with every entry card they complete, up to one per day. When they turn in their card, they get a small prize every time. And then that card is also their um, ticket for some drawings. So every week we're giving out Target gift cards and books. And then at the end of the month, um, we'll take all the tickets and draw for the grand prizes. And we have some exciting stuff for that too. We have um, a Kindle Fire HD, a family pass to the Museum of Science and Industry, and some more gift cards and a family fun package. We're celebrating just that 
We are your community space to come and uh, read, hang out, meet other families here, come to programs. Um, so just the community is really a focus for us. The Mount Prospect Public Library Winter Reading Program, Connect With Your Library, runs throughout the month of February. For more information, contact the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. Unfortunately, there are no crystal balls when it comes to predicting how the stock market will fare in the future. There are, however, experts who could help us navigate the relatively complicated field of investment choices. Joining me today on Library Live to discuss the financial forecast for 2018 is certified financial planner John Daly of Daly Investment Management. Welcome. Hi, Kathy. Thanks. John, I'd like to start out by talking a little bit about your background in finance. Yeah, so I've been an investment advisor for 19 years now. Mm. I was also a certified financial planner. I spent 10 years working for two of the country's largest brokerage firms, and nine years ago I set up my own firm, Daily Investment Management, as a registered investment advisor. Let's have a little recap of 2017. How did the economy fare and how did the stock market fare? The economy did really well and the stock market did even better. Uh, we had a, the, the stock market ended up a little bit over 20% for the year. Wow. Um, yeah, it was a good, good year for investors. Mm -hmm. um, actually, all across the board, there was some good news. Um, bond investors did well. Cash investors kind of ended up on the low end, which has been a trend for a number of years now. But overall, the economy looks really strong. The stock market showed it with some good numbers. Um, we see some different changes coming that we've seen, we haven't seen in the past eight years. For mm -hmm. example, international equities right. um, actually did better than U.S. equities, something we haven't seen in seven, eight years. Um, so all across the board, we had some good, good numbers for investors. Considering how well the stock market did in 2017, um, what type of performance can the average investor expect in 2018? Well, the economy looks really strong right now. Mm -hmm. Unemployment's at 4.1%. Um, expectations are for it to go even into the threes. Wow. So numbers we haven't seen since the 1950s. All across the board, the economy looks like it's firing on all cylinders and producing good numbers. So. The market should have a good year in 2018. Um, obviously, we can't predict the future, right? Um, but barring any big, you know, bumps in the road, geopolitical threats, anything, you know, like that, we should have a good, good market in 2018 as well. So we don't have to worry about a topping off or anything like that. Well, we always have to worry about that. Right. We, and the unexpected can happen, and if we knew that, it's not the unexpected, right? <laughs> so the unexpected always happens. So I always tell clients, make sure you know what you own. Okay, make sure you're. Investments are categorized with your risk level, your goals, your comfort level and time horizon moving forward. Right. Um, now is not a bad time to take some profits off the table. We've had a couple really good years of performance in the stock market. Right. Lock some of those gains in. Look at your portfolio rebalance because anything can happen in the future. Right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the uh, steady economic growth that the United States has been experiencing mm -hmm. over the past eight years. Yep. Do you feel that that trend's going to going to continue? I do. Um, this is going to be we're close to it being the second longest recovery on record, going back to the early 1900s. Um, so we're, we're we're coming on eight years of of expansion, um, but it's been one of the lowest producing expansions on record as well. Right. So the average GDP growth on expansions has been about 2.8, almost 3 percent. This recovery has been closer to 2.2 percent. Um, the past couple quarters we've had 3 percent GDP growth, which is a good sign. Um, some of the tax cuts moving forward might help get us more consistent 3 percent GDP growth in the future. Right. So this recovery could have some legs and keep going. Well, why do you feel we have been underproductive, if you will? Well, it's tough. Um, 2008 shook a lot of people up, the financial mm -hmm. crisis. Of that course. was a big, big recession, a great recession, as they call it. So the confidence maybe of the recovery wasn't there for a lot of people. Um, people were nervous about what happened in 2008 since it was such a big shakeup. So the regain and, and to kind of feel comfortable of spending a little bit more, businesses investing a little bit more just wasn't there. That's starting to change a little bit now. Okay, so what are some of the indicators that you look for as an investor mm -hmm. um, when, when you're looking at things for different investments for your clients? Okay, so obviously the economy in general, how, what, what the strength looks like, unemployment rates, um, what the yield curve is, so what that looks like, what interest rates are. We had three rate hikes in 2017. Wow. Um, the Fed is expecting to do three more rate hikes in 2018. Mm -hmm. So those are all indicators we look at. And then the valuation of the stock market. So. 
if you, you've probably heard a little bit recently about the market being a little bit overvalued versus historic measures, okay? Right. And we are a little bit over above val average valuations. Um, so you look at a lot of those and decide, you know, where the opportunities are. Um, right. One of the things I mentioned earlier was international stocks. So international mm -hmm. stocks really haven't participated in the recovery as much as U.S. stocks. Mm -hmm. That changed in 2017. International stocks did a lot better than U.S. stocks. I think that trend will continue, uh, but I do think the returns in the U.S. can be uh, positive moving forward as well if we keep getting this strong GDP growth. Um, I think the tax cut will help businesses uh, with the corporate tax rate going down, hopefully spur some spending, hire some additional employees, which all kind of ends up in consumers' hands mm -hmm. um, and spur some spending and growth out there. Okay, so all this being said, yep. what are your investment strategies for 2018? So everyone's different. So that's the, you know, I don't have was one, one bucket strategy. So everyone's different. So depending on what stage of life you're in, if you're trying to accumulate wealth and save it for retirement, or you're in retirement and trying to preserve that wealth, your strategy is going to be different. So it all depends on that. Everyone, every one of my clients has a unique strategy based around their own circumstance. Right. So that's why I tell clients you have to look at, and even investors out there, look at what you own, understand what you own, and is it reaching and meeting your goals? Okay, do you own the right portfolio to reach your goals? Are you taking too much risk? Should that be pared back? Because recessions never kind of come announced. They never announce themselves and say right. there's gonna be a market correction the next quarter or the next six months. They kind of come out of nowhere a lot of times and catch people off guard. Um, so you want to make sure your portfolio is in the right areas. Um, like I said, now's a good time to rebalance since we've had a couple years of, of good equity growth. Right. So you're probably a little bit overweight equities. Okay, so it's now, now it's time to lock in a little bit of profit in there. So it's never a bad time to take some profits. Okay, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the different stages of life because you've got sure. the 20-year-olds who are just getting out of school, yep. just starting their jobs. And then you got the retirees mm -hmm. who uh, may have retired 20 years ago. Yep. Um, so what is your advice for, um, for the different stages? So earlier, younger investors, obviously you have a lot of years in front of you. You can take more risk, obviously, okay, and you can you know, be a little bit more aggressive because that money you know, should be invested 20, 30 years until you reach retirement. Right. Older investors have to be more cautious about risk. They don't have the time frame to make up losses, right. okay? And they want to preserve that wealth, generate income, and, and satisfy their retirement needs. Um, so that's, depending on what age you're at, it's going to depend upon what your you know situation is. And then personal risk comfort level. I mean, everyone's different. Some people can accept risk and, you know, volatility is part of the stock market. And some investors are comfortable with that, others investors are not. Right. So even if you're young and you're not comfortable with that, maybe you know you, you just can't stomach the, a 20% decline in your portfolio because the market had a correction. So that's gonna dictate where you are. Um, the other thing I would say is investors really need to put their investments, long-term investments, in long-term options. So right. there's still a lot of uh, assets and cash today. So over $12 trillion in cash. Wow. That's a big dollar amount, yeah. okay? And cash, as we all know, is earning next to nothing. Mm -hmm. So short-term money that you need the next 12, 18 months or for short-term purchases, stay in cash, stay in a liquid money market account, savings account. Money that you're not planning on using for three, five, 10 years, that money should be in long-term investments to get you a better interest rate or better return on your money. Very good advice. Any final words of wisdom with regard to the financial forecast for 2018? Um, so obviously, we can't. We, no one can predict the future. We don't, we don't have a crystal ball. So right. make sure you monitor your portfolio. Know what you own. Know what your risk. Understand what your risk level is, and make sure it matches your goals and risk tolerance. Okay. Thank you so much for being with My me. My pleasure. Again, I'm so happy to have you every time Thanks. you come. Nice to be back. For more information regarding John's program, Financial Forecast for 2018, or any upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library event, contact the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. American author and poet Gertrude Stein hosted a salon in 1920s Paris that was a popular destination for leading figures in literature and art, like Pablo Picasso and Ernest Hemingway. Let's accept the library's invitation for a salon with Gertrude Stein and take a virtual journey into the trappings of this legendary setting. 
Transcending the years and the miles, 54 Mile Prospect Public Library patrons find themselves virtually transported to Gertrude Stein's Paris apartment, where they can join the ranks of such famous guests as F. Scott Fitzgerald, Sinclair Lewis, and Pablo Picasso. Gertrude Stein was one of the um, people who brought in, ushered in the modern art movement to the 20th century. She and her brother Leo had a salon at 27 Rue de Fleurus in Paris, France, and all the movers and shakers of the 20th century art movement, Picasso being probably the most luminous, um, came through and um, they introduced the world to modern art. Gertrude Stein has arrived! Actor Betsy Means brings Gertrude Stein to life during this hour-long one-woman performance. Performance. What drew me to Gertrude originally was that a librarian asked me to do a one-off of Gertrude Stein. So I actually got this wig done and then about 10 years later I went, well I've got the Gertrude Stein wig. So I started reading about her and uh, found her interesting. She's a famous, not famous person. Stein is one of nearly a dozen women in history featured in the repertoire of the company that means founded, Woman Lore. I didn't want to do theater because I didn't want to be away from my husband and little girl. So I came up with the idea of woman lore. And I do have the ability to read these women's writings and adapt them into script form and create one woman shows. And then I also have the ability to memorize these very difficult pieces. And um, I felt like I found my crystal ding. It's really uses all my talent that I've got, all my energy. Yeah. A question and answer session wraps up Means' historical portrayal, giving her the opportunity to educate as well as entertain in a setting she admires and appreciates, the library. They are the crown jewels of the United States of America. You can come to the, the libraries, you can, you can become educated, you can read, you can get all the knowledge you want. It's all here. I couldn't have really done woman lore without the libraries. The events and materials available here at the Mount Prospect Public Library allow patrons the opportunity to experience an alternate time and place or perhaps step into the shoes of others. Let's find out what South Branch patron assistant Rachel Liner has chosen as her best book pick from the Adult Services Department. The Book of Unknown Americans by Cristina Enriquez is a novel written as a series of interconnected stories, each of which could stand on its own. The book tells the story of several immigrant families from countries in Central and South America who end up in Delaware. We learn their backstory, what brought them to the U.S., and a little about how they got here, as well as getting a vivid picture of what life here is like for them living as immigrants in a country with a culture and language so distinct from their own, and one in which immigrants are not always openly welcomed. The families all live in the same apartment complex owned by another immigrant, and their lives are at once interconnected and often isolated each family with its own challenges and obstacles to overcome. The core of the stories involve a family who comes to the U.S. to provide educational opportunities to their daughter, who was brain damaged in an accident, and her relationship with the son of another tenant. At the same time, Enriquez interweaves the story with that of other tenants who face language barriers, economic hardship, and discrimination, among other challenges. Enriquez's writing draws you into the lives of her characters and you feel their disappointments and frustration and their small moments of joy as well. When you finish the book, you will be left hoping there will be a second book so you can continue following their stories. Recommendations from the Adult Services Department this month focus on the plight of immigrants. Girl in Translation by Jean Kwok tells the story of a girl who immigrates with her mother from Hong Kong to Brooklyn, where she begins a double life as a student by day and a sweatshop worker by night in order to save her family from poverty. A Manual for Cleaning Women by Lucia Berlin is an anthology of short stories set in the American Southwest in which the author finds a blend of humor and melancholy in the events of everyday life. In How the Garcia Girls Lost Their Accents by Julia Alvarez, a family forced to flee their Caribbean island after an attempted coup adjusts to their new life in the Bronx while clinging to their old traditions. 
Believers, a novel by Lisa Ko, is the poignant story of a boy who struggles to find his footing in a new world. After being deserted by his undocumented Chinese immigrant mother, and eventually relocated from the Bronx to a small town by the parents who adopt him. And in We Never Asked for Wings by Vanessa Diffenbaugh, a woman who has spent the last 14 years working multiple jobs to make ends meet, must adjust to motherhood after her Mexican parents and caregivers decide to return to their native land. Recommendations from the Youth Services Department this month highlight friendships or books that seek to bridge divisions. Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, the story behind an American friendship by Russell Friedman, tells how these two political foes shared a brief moment in time when they could appreciate and learn from each other. In A Friend Called Anne, one woman's story of war, peace, and a unique friendship with Anne Frank by Carol Ann Lee, Frank's former best friend Jacqueline Van Marsen reminisces about their friendship and her own experiences of the Holocaust. Understanding the Holy Land, answering questions about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict by Mitch Frank addresses a complex topic in a manner that is comprehensible for children. In Three Wishes, Palestinian and Israeli Children Speak by Deborah Ellis, young people write about their lives growing up in a conflicted area of the world. And in Ship of Dolls by Shirley Parento, a girl works at writing the best letter possible to accompany a doll being sent to Japan for a friendship exchange. Finally, here's youth patron assistant Ann Wilson with her best book pick from this department. Ever had a pen pal? And I will always write back. Caitlin Ali Ferenka tells the true story of how she became Martin Ganda's pen pal in middle school. Caitlin is in her class in Pennsylvania when she gets an assignment to choose a person in a different country to write to. She chooses Martin in Zimbabwe and sends him her picture. Martin sends her the only picture his family owns. As Caitlin realizes that Martin and his family are not safe in Zimbabwe, she starts to send him her babysitting money to help pay for food and rent, and eventually her family pays for his schooling. Caitlin and her family are able to help Martin to get to the United States so he can go to college. This story is one example of how one small gesture can lead to wonderful things happening. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, a variety of Star Wars characters were born. Characters who continue to spur the imagination through books, new media, film sequels, and a variety of other entertainment mediums. Let's begin on a library party celebrating Star Wars Day. An epic film series and media franchise that has been going strong since 1977, Star Wars and its fans are a multi-generational phenomenon. There's a whole universe that was created, approved by George Lucas, and I think that kept that love of Star Wars going. I think they did a good job of creating a universe past the books, but I think the other thing is that's so original it was unique at its time, and I think they just keep making it more and more unique. Youth Technology Librarian Laura Boss and Youth Programming Assistant Amy Murda celebrate this library's second annual Star Wars Day with a costume party for 20 library patrons in grades 2 through 4. It's basically just celebrating all the different books that have been published that have Star Wars in them and just kind of having, you know, enjoyment of Star Wars in the library. The fun begins with snacks and continues into a bevy of activities, all following the Star Wars theme. We'll talk a little bit about Star Wars, we'll do a trivia game, they'll also get to make their own Ewok to take home. There's also a lightsaber game with pool noodle lightsabers, and they're going to have to try to keep balloons out of their force field area. And we're going to do some pod racing. Our pod racers won't fly like in the movie, but we will have them make different kind of racing mobiles out of Legos and then see if their pod racer actually works. 
Young fans revel in the activities while socializing and donning the garb of their favorite Star Wars characters. My favorite Star Wars character is Kylo Ren, and it's because he has a unique force ability, such as stopping blaster bolts in midair. Darth Vader, because he's really strong, and I like a lot of evil characters from movies. Boba Fett, because I really like his group of bounty hunters. Finn, because he was originally a stormtrooper, and I like stormtroopers. There's a bunch of things you can do at the library, and we're welcoming. And this is a great place. If you love something, you can find something here. Youth Services Star Wars Party is just one example of the many entertaining, informational, and educational events featured here at the Mount Prospect Public Library every month. Don't miss any library programs you'd like to experience. Here's a list of events scheduled in January and February. Reservations are strongly recommended. For more information regarding these events, call area code 847-2535675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. You will also find a listing and description of all upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library events in your library newsletter preview. As mentioned earlier, 2018 marks the library's 75th anniversary. And February's winter reading program is just the beginning of a variety of events celebrating its role as the community's place to gather, imagine, and create. And so it seems fitting that our Library Live camera today asks the question, what do you appreciate most about the Mount Prospect Public Library and why? Here are some responses. It's always a very safe place to come to and enjoy your books and spend time at. And I'm also part of the library book discussion group, which I enjoy. Well, the wonderful uh, arrangement they have with the copier servicing the public. And I mean, it is excellent. I like to read, and I read at least two novels a week. And I couldn't get along without the library. That wraps up this edition of Library Life. For more information on any of the Mount Prospect Public Library services and events highlighted here, call area code 847-2535675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. And don't forget to connect with your library by joining the Winter Reading Program running throughout the month of February.